Jesus. Could it be that it has been Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Could it be that it has been Santa Claus? And nowhere in that have we taken time to teach the values and the importance of realizing it is about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do you find Jesus? Those that I'm speaking of this morning do not know the way of God. And as David said, God is not in their thoughts at all. As the Apostle Paul said, destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace they have not known. They live in the midst of Christianity. They, they live in the midst of our lives, but they are unaffected by the message of the cross any longer. The preacher was visiting Providence, Rhode Island. Walked into a restaurant to eat. He asked the waiter who was also a mother that waited on him, have you been born again? She said, born again, what's that? To hear her, it was vain babbling and it was a foreign language yet under the eaves of churches surrounded by neighbors and neighborhoods that professed Christianity in a town where preachers are plentiful. She had never heard the story of a new birth in Jesus Christ. After a few minutes of witnessing that preacher as he was eating there, promised uh, she, he asked the individual and, and she promised him that she would read the scriptures that he laid out before her and his hopes was that it would change her outlook on life another occasion preacher was eating with a friend in a restaurant in Santa Monica California when their waitress brought the bill to them there was a place on the back of that bill for remarks and the friend eating with the preacher wrote this question what think ye of Christ when the young lady returned to receive the money, the friend requested that she answer the question on the back of the bill. She looked at him and back at the question and back at him and back at the question and her answer was absolutely astonishing. The question was, what think ye of Christ? Her answer was, oh, I don't dabble in politics. And I'm reminded this morning that we have raised a generation that knows nothing of Jesus. We have raised a society. We are living in a society when Jesus is no different than Santa Claus or politics or government. And I say, God, how do we, as a Bible-believing, full gospel, Pentecostal church, help others find Jesus this Christmas season? might seem ridiculous to many you might think well of course everybody knows that Christmas is about Jeep no everybody doesn't as proven by the examples I have given you this morning many of us will say it's ridiculous but what she had lived to learn is realizing uh, that she had lived to she had learned to, to make a living but she had never really lived a life a fullness here to tell you this morning there are more than we realize around us that are ignorant of true Christianity if there's ever a time that we need to be focused or should I say refocused on the mission that God has called us to it is a time in which we live when it seems that Christianity is being attacked at every side and I say Lord if there's one thing good about Christmas there's a lots of things good but if there's one thing good it gives me a, a little bit of a way in to, te to teach and to train and to be an example that there is a Savior He was born of a virgin He did live a sinless life and because of that I have been able to find Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior there's a ignorance of true Christianity in the world some of what we would call the brainiest men are totally ignorant of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to them the cross and Calvary is, a, is an offense to them or it is considered foolishness. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, they are ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And I say, God, we see that upon every hand. It seems that technology, it seems that, that, that even do-it-yourself projects are, are just multiplying in, in, in the volume and multiplying in the ability of us to do things of that nature. It seems that, that it's just out of control how I can stand on the sidewalk of the uh, of the 
City Hall in downtown Winter Garden on a Friday night last week and talk to my son and my daughter at a hotel in Nicaragua blows my mind. But we did it. And I said, God, but more importantly than that, have I taught somebody about Jesus? Have I helped somebody find Jesus? Listen to what the Word of God says. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of the world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine so should shine unto them. I say, Lord, it is our job to share the light of Jesus. It is our job to help others that don't know this way in which we travel to realize that it's not just about gifts. It's not just about Christmas trees and Christmas lights. It's not about the giving and receiving. But it is about my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ who was born on earth that we might live and have life abundantly. See, they have learned the way to the moon, but they have not known the creator of the moon who said, learn of me. Think about that. We've put folks on the moon, but people still don't know about Jesus. They have learned that the speed of light travels 186,000 miles per second, but yet they do not know the light of the world. They have learned the earth is round, And it is 25,000 miles in circumference. But they belong to a group of whom it is said in John 1 and 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. I said we've got folks that are much more intelligent, Pastor Ricky, than I will ever be. Folks that can do much more than I will ever do. But they do not know who Jesus is put men on the moon we travel realize that light travels faster than we can really imagine uh, and we realize that the earth is round uh, but we don't know who Jesus is Uh, we have learned that approximately 70% of the earth is water but they have not found that Jesus is uh, the water of life so God allow us to drink from that fountain again today allow us to be able to share that fountain with somebody this week as we or with friends and family. We have learned that the sun is 93 million miles from the earth, but they have not made an acquaintance with the Son of Righteousness. Through all of their learning, they have not come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? Christ said it best in chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. My friend, if you're living for anything else this week, you're living for the wrong purpose. Christians and members and laity of this church, I will tell you this is a message for our church. It is our job to get the message of Jesus Christ outside of these four walls. It is our job to let others realize while trees and decorations are important, that is not the message of Christmas. It is the message of a, of a babe born of a virgin who came as the plan of salvation for our life. And if they do not have childlike faith and receive Jesus as their Savior, then there is waiting for them an eternal punishment of hell and I say God allow me to help somebody find Jesus this Christmas truth is a personality Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and that truth is a personality and that personality is Jesus Christ in pursuit of satisfaction men make profound discoveries only to miss the most simple message The most simple message it may be, but it is still the most profound message, and that is a personal experience with Christ who is the truth. See, this is the truth that will still set you and I free. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10, And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. I say, God, if there's ever an opportunity, if there's ever a platform, if there's ever a stage that we as Christians have, it is the season in which we're in right now to help somebody realize their need for a person 
personal Savior. Who are you going to help find Christ this season? The Bible says in Hosea 4 and 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject them. I said, God, don't let me be one that sits idly by Pastor Jeff and see folks die and go to a devil's hell. Don't let me get caught up in the giving and receiving of gifts and eating fudge with pecans on them and drinking a soda pop and punch at Christmas events. And I forget to share the message of Jesus. Because many folks are looking to someone for an answer. And that someone often is us. And that message needs to be Jesus. And that message needs to be Calvary. And that message needs to be a personal relationship with Him. In this pulpit just a few services ago, I preached a simple message on salvation. And I went through the steps. I went through the process. It's available for us through the power and the blood of the Lamb. And I said, God, allow us this season to take it serious. And allow us this season when we wrap our hands around family members, we can ask them questions like, What think ye of Jesus or where would you go if you died tonight or have you realized your need for a savior or what have you done for the kingdom lately I say God it's our job it's our job to help them understand the importance of turning away from sin and turning unto Jesus it's our job to help them find the message of Calvary find the message of that babe find the message of that one born to that virgin Mary on that night and realize that he came that we might have life this morning morning turn away from our sin and turn into Christ oh yes my prayer this Christmas season is not just one of love and peace and joy my prayer this season is that a sinner would come to find Jesus my prayer this Christmas as we wrap our arms around our children and we do Christmas with them and Christmas with friends and Christmas with family and Christmas with you. I said, Lord, uh, let it be more than about a gathering. Because see, we can gather ourselves to death. What do you mean, Pastor? This event on this night and this event on that night. And I think this week we're booked Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. It's just the way it goes sometimes with our schedule. I say, God, but don't let me just go through the schedules. Let me share the message of Jesus. Let me ask them, have you found Christ? I've been tempted to put a little baby Jesus in, in a pocket. Had a student bring a manger setting to chapel this week and we displayed that for students to see and it was a little a little wood a little wood manger set there and it was one they had hand painted and one of them was the picture of the manger with the baby Jesus and I said what if I put that in my pocket and just set it out at the table when I go to the restaurant or what about when I go home to see mom and grandma I've got two brothers that are not saved. If they don't change their ways, they're not going to make it. What could I do if I put that at the dinner table with us? And allow it to be a piece of, of furniture that we use to talk about this week and next week and the days to come. And ask them, have you found Jesus? Ask them, can I help you find Jesus? Because church, I believe this thing is just about over. And I believe those that are watching and those that are waiting and those that are looking for His appearing will be ready to go and will be helping others find Jesus. And I say, God, in a, in a life that we live where, where it seems that we're so intelligent, how is it that we know so much but yet we're not smart at all? Listen to what I'm saying this morning. Let this Christmas season be different than any other. Don't wait until you get better to do something for Jesus. Why don't you just start now? Some have questioned me, almost said challenged me, but that's the wrong word. Questioned me. Some of my own family. You're not afraid of your kids going off out of the country? I said, mm hmm. No. I'm concerned concerned 
any parent should be concerned. But every time I begin to feel a tug of uneasiness, maybe I'm reminded we took all three of those kids at separate times when they were born and we brought them before a pastor in a church setting and we dedicated them back to the Lord and said, wherever you lead them, we're okay with. Don't make that commitment unless you're ready to live up to it. I said, God, places that I'll never go, they may be able to go. People that I'll never impact, they may be able to impact. And they may be able to ask somebody the question, what do you think of Jesus? Let this Christmas be different. Let this Christmas be one that we're bold about who we are. Don't wait until you get better. Don't wait until you get through your dark valley. Don't wait until you get over your sickness. Don't wait until you get your bills paid off. Trust Jesus now and be willing to share Him with somebody else. It's not in man to redeem ourselves. Time, age, culture, development will not make you better in the eyes of an almighty God. But only through the blood of Jesus Christ. The one that was born in a manger on that first Christmas night. Only through His blood can you be saved. Why not believe today that you're able to impact the world for Jesus? Why don't you believe today that you're able to help somebody find the true meaning of Christmas this season? Many of you know this old hymn. I won't sing it. I'll just read it to you. Just as I am. Without one plea. By thy, but by thy blood was shed for me. And that thou biddest me to come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come. I come. I said, God, on this Christmas season that we're in, let me be the first that says, I will gladly bow down at the feet of Jesus again. And say, God, I am first of all thankful you came. Secondly, let me be bold enough to help somebody else find Jesus this Christmas season that we live. Remember, remember what you, what you do, who you are, and where you're going. The Father is able to help you with that this morning. Doesn't matter how low, doesn't matter how bad. Remember, He is the Savior that seeks. Remember, the Bible says that He came to seek and to save that which was lost. The whole point of Him coming at Christmas was that you and I would have life. We would have it more abundantly. See, I'm not just a citizen of this world. I don't just live in Ocoee, Florida. My kids got home Friday night, Saturday morning before I left to the office. I said, give me the passports. They go back in my office, locked in a file, and that's where they'll stay until Daddy says so, or until they need them again, one or the other. But I'm not just a citizen of this world. Many years ago, I've got another passport stamped. And I accepted this man named Jesus, born of a virgin in a stable one lonely night who lived a life without sin and died on a Calvary's cross I accepted him as my Lord and as my Savior but it's not just for me it's for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord and in this setting this morning I would say a lot of us if not the most of us are saved and ready to go I hope you are but if you're not this is for you but if you are can I tell you there is somebody this week that you need to help them find Christ. There's somebody this week that needs to hear the Christmas story. There's somebody this week that needs to know as smart as they think they are. If they don't know Jesus, they're not too smart at all. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this church. Thank you, Lord, for the principles. Lord, and the doctrine and the biblical foundation that you've allowed us to be a part of. Father and Lord, Christmas time is probably one of the easiest opportunities that we have to open up the message of Jesus. Father, and I pray that we don't just go through the routine. I pray this morning we don't just go through the hustle and the bustle, Lord, and meet the obligations, but we honestly 